simple as that. Um, okay. So, uh, so the, spher the spherical harmonics are, are going to come into this eigenfunction here, the U, somehow, because you know, because of this link, because of this. So let's. Uh, you might find this a bit fuzzy, fuzzed over a little, but um, let's assume that. Uh, now see, we're we're bringing in eigen uh, the angular momentum to some extent. You know, it came in with the. With this here, uh, but we're simplifying it uh, by well, be the next next square. But anyway, so let's assume that the eigenfunction now is, uh, d is depends on three parameters. Before what was it chapter two way back? Um, we 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 solved only a simplified version of where the wave function was depending only on r on the on the position. So now now we've got just three. Uh, three parameters, the position and the two polar angles, theta, theta and phi. Now let's assume that that wave function, uh, eigenfunction here, right, let's assume that it can be factored, can be split into two parts. Uh, we, we did something like this earlier as well. Um, so let's assume there's a spatial part, a spatial function, so big R, that depends on uh, little r, little r is the position. And uh, for the polar angle part, the, the angular part, if you like, uh, will be the spherical harmonics. Um, now, uh, that's, that sounds plausible because if you think about it, uh, the wave, the eigenfunctions of these two operators, uh, now these two operators, they depend on the angles. There's no, there's no mention of R in either of these. So if you plug this thing into the eigen equations of L squared or L Z, the R is just effectively a constant, right? As far as far as these two operators are concerned. So you can just you can just cross out the R both sides of the eigen equation for the these two operators, right? So this this then is an eigen function for L squared and L Z because the R is uh, effectively in, as far as its influence on theta and phi no influence, independent right? so that, that's a, uh, an eigen function for the polar coordinates now a similar logic uh, is it true? I'm just running the other way around uh, so the operator is on R. Uh, so this this will become if, well. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but think about it. So the L squared acts on this U. You now, if this U's of this form, right, is the eigenfunction. So the L squared acts on this and will give you an eigenvalue of L into L plus 1. Right? So effectively, they're just numbers, they're constants. Okay? So this, this here just becomes effectively a constant. Here we'll put L into L plus 1. And if you've got that as a constant, effectively, you know, scalar in effect, uh, this is a scalar, so this then becomes, the whole thing then becomes an eigen uh, equation with R, just R. And since the prime theta uh, irrelevant to R, uh, the eigenfunction fun for the energy e equation becomes really just a function of little r. And this, this effectively is constant. So that's a, well, another way of looking at it. All right, so, um, so let's, let's, this L hat squared of u, let's change that to L yeah, the eigen with in here replace it with the eigenvalues L times L plus one, and watch what happens. Okay, so uh, now here's your eigen equation for the angular momentum of L squared. So it's uh, so here's your eigenvalue. So it's h bar squared l into l plus little l into l plus one, right? Where l's, l's just integers. It's just this is you know, revision from uh, 
angular momentum theory from the previous chapter. Okay, so uh, so we can rewrite uh, the Schrodinger equation um, on this side in this form. Okay, so here uh, here's your u. Your u uh, we factored into a spatial term r and a uh, polar angle term y. Okay, r y and r y. Now, uh, where's now before we had l l l hat squared uh, times u, but the u is now r y. Well, I brought the r to the left here, and so we got a an l squared um, y m. Well, that's the left hand side of an eigen equation for angular momentum. And so the right hand side becomes then the eigenvalue. Well, that's just h bar squared l, l plus 1. You know, it's, it's, it's this, it's that. So, so you can replace this by this. So plug it in here, right? And the u, uh, again, ry and the u ry, right? Now, we have uh, a y in common all through. Cancel, you know, divide all through both sides by the, the this circle harmonic because you know, it's in common all sides, and you're left with this thing that uh, looks to be a, an equation uh, entirely in terms of r, right, the position. So uh, that's simplified a lot, right, from that messy uh, the previous session uh, that messy uh, Schrodinger equation. Uh, using the spherical polar coordinates form of the del squared operator with its r and its theta and its phi. It's quite complicated. Well, now now we've got something uh, quite a bit easier, and it's all in terms of r. Right? There's no no mention of theta and phi anymore. That sort of disappeared with this trick of using the l hat squared operator with its eigenvalue here. Because you know, these are just numbers now, the scalars, so it's, so it's potential. I mean, this, this is an operator, right? Uh, the e, uh, that's a scalar, that's, that'll be an eigenfunction, uh, eigenvalue, right? So you can effectively, these are numbers now. Oh, wait a minute, got an r here. R squared, okay, forget, forget what I just said. <laughs> uh, but that you can take over. All right. Now, uh, this, this here, is probably familiar to it as well. Uh, the h bar squared uh, l into l plus one. That's the expectation value of this operator. Okay, but you've also you've also got this two, well, th effectively mass r squared underneath. So rewrite rewrite this term as the expectation value divided by two mu r squared. Okay, and and you know that's just that'll just be a number. Now, as a bit of a comment here, um, again, uh, a reference to classical mechanics. Uh, again, if you don't know what, what this is, if you haven't studied classical mechanics in detail, this will probably be meaningless. But if you have, uh, there's a, this term here is similar, you know, related, equivalent, the, the quantum mechanical equivalent of the classical mechanical uh, centrifugal potential barrier. Uh, which is of this form. Right? Now this L here is now just the classical angular momentum. And uh, this term, this concept, pops up uh, when you're uh, analyzing planetary orbits. Now, uh, like I say, just, just a comment, like a footnote, if you like. Damn, I hope. <laughs> that shocked me. That's the neighbor drilling. Uh, I, hope, I hope it doesn't keep up all um, damn. damn 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 so I'm gonna have to speak between the drill noises all right okay now uh, some more comments have a, have a look at this equation here well with this substituted for this uh, you will see that uh, this r here that's your eigenfunction so here, here's your an eigen equation for that. You can see just by inspection that this big R here, this eigen function, will obviously be uh, a function of R, 
and L, it'll, you know, the result here will depend on L, okay? But there's no mention of M. There's no mention of the component of the angular momentum or the eigenvalue of LZ, operator LZ. There's no mention of N here, right? It's just this R is going to depend on two things. It'll be some formula with R's in it and L's, R and L, okay? So uh, that's worth remembering. Now, uh, that's, you know, you can deduce that just from looking at it by inspection uh, mathematically, but you can also, that makes sense physically as well. Why? Uh, well, because, um, why is that? Because you've got a spherical symmetry. Why is that? Why, why do we have spherical symmetry? Because we're talking about we talk about this, and this doesn't, the angle, the angle here doesn't, the polar angles of this uh, number uh, don't come into it. It's just effectively a scalar now, right? So, so um, it's really, everything just function then of just R. So, so if that's the case, you've got a spherical symmetry type situation, in which case the orientation of the z-axis, when you've got a system that's spherically symmetric, it's sort of irrelevant, right? It's, uh, with, with spherical symmetry. Okay, so uh, yeah, the what what does what does it mean to talk about the z-axis in a spherically symmetric system? Yeah, it's sort of pointless. So it's not surprising uh, this this equation here is independent of m. It, it'll depend only on r and l. Okay, so I'll stop there and no more drilling, hopefully.